Hey everyone, Jeff here. Welcome to another episode of the Modern Kitchen Renovation Series. This is episode 16, believe it or not. In our last episode, uh, we actually added some design options into our model uh, to show uh, the sink in two different locations as well as the range in two different locations. Um, really cool uh, lesson for those of you who haven't learned about design options, so be sure to check that out. In today's episode, we're going to be finalizing our Enscape scene. Um, we use Enscape um, in parallel as a design tool side by side with Revit, as you've probably seen throughout this entire series, um, how much it just becomes sort of a another uh, arm of Revit uh, when it comes to being able to explore these designs as they build. And so what we're going to do today is we're actually going to add some detail um, to that Enscape seam in order to get it ready to present to clients. Um, as you guys have seen, uh, it looks pretty good. Uh, materials, lighting is looking great, but there's a lot more to make a scene, especially a, a real um, real time rendered scene, um, feel more immersive, feel more realistic. And that's going to be adding things like decorations and things on the countertops as well as background pieces like landscaping plantings and so on and so forth so i'm hoping to show you guys some really neat tricks with how i add assets to an enscape scene how i manage them in revit and how i sort of built this this scene up uh, in order to present to the clients as usual i wanted to thank our sponsor revitfamily.biz for sponsoring this entire series as you know brenton did not just sponsor the series but he's also offering you the audience of this series 20 percent off any Revit cabinet, door, window, any family package that he creates. So feel free to head on over to revitfamily.biz, use offer code 2022 Revit Kid and save now. You can use the link up here or down here. Check out this little video and then I'll see you guys on the other side. <music> All right, so let's jump right into Revit and we'll start building this Enscape scene. So there's a lot of ways you can manage the Enscape assets. Um, one of my the easiest ways, in my opinion, is design options. Most of them are under planting, so you could probably just hide them using categories. But I'm creating a design option called Enscape. And option one um, is going to be the primary option, and that's going to be Enscape assets off. So basically, you have an empty option. Um, that will be the assets being off. Then you have option two, which is Enscape assets on. So there are obviously different ways you can do this. You can use work sets if you really want to use work sets or visibility. Um, you can use categories, filters, etc. But I'm just using a, a design option. So you'll notice I made the option. I'm active in the option, and then I launch Enscape. So this is key. Um, when you're placing assets within the Enscape uh, browser itself, you need to be active in the option that you want them to be placed on. You need to have the um, real-time connection running for Enscape, so you can't be paused. And, uh, and, and you want to make sure that you're in the view that you need to be in. And so what you'll see here is I'm actually uh, modifying this, this shelf here to make it one <laughs> cabinet instead. But I'm going to start filling in these shelves with assets. So the key is I have my design option active in Revit. I have Enscape running as a real-time. It's not paused. And I'm actually just placing assets in Enscape. Um, and the really cool thing about this is as I'm placing all these assets, when I click apply changes, it's actually placing them in my Revit model under the design option that's active, right? So now I can almost fully work in, in Enscape to build these Enscape asset elements. So you can see I'm putting plates, I'm putting coffee pots, I'm putting mugs, and then I'm clicking apply changes. And when I do that, it's actually placing these assets in the design option in my Revit model as needed, but I'm able to work in the Enscape view, which can be super helpful when it comes to trying to sort of visualize what you want these things to do. Um, as I mentioned before, adding this kind of stuff may seem kind of silly to some people, um, but when it comes to final renderings or final animations or final live VR walkthroughs, etc. Um, having little details like uh, cookie jars and, and sugar containers and whatever tea kettles uh, in the scene really, really, really helps it um, add to the realism of your scene. So you can see I'm just placing a whole bunch of stuff um, throughout the scene, um, including little, little, uh, little knickknacks in the middle of the table. And you can see even just adding those there, uh, it has a completely different feel to the scene. It feels more realistic. You get a sense of what the space is, how it could be used, and so on and so forth. So here I am just sort of looking around some of the stuff I added. You can see I added the mixer, I added this little coffee pot, I added the bowls, um, et cetera. But remember, they're all being added into the Revit model as well. 
Um, so and into the active option of the Revit model. So now I'm actually going to um, jump over to uh, Brenton um, from RevitFamily.biz. Um, as you, if you saw me in my um, cabinet placement episode when I was building the actual cabinets into the scene, um, he has a great pro sample file, and I'm actually stealing his uh, under cabinet lighting uh, for for these shelves because they were there and they looked great. So I'm just placing some of these under cabinet lighting. Again, I just took those straight from the sample file that Brenton provides with the um, uh, cabinet family package. And uh, you can see it's just kind of an LED strip light that goes underneath the cabinet. And I wanted to just add a little bit of light in, in those two open cabinets to give it just a little something extra to the scene. So I'm just modifying this light. I believe this light is um, level based, so it didn't have to worry about faces or anything like that. And you can see I'm going to place it in these two cabinets where I, I just placed all of that content. Now what I want to do is I want to place a couple um, four inch um, take the four inch uh, LED down lights that I have in the ceiling and I made a two inch version. I wanted a couple little small down lights for under the cabinet. So I'm just duplicating my family, modifying the size from four inch to two inch and uh, and placing them in the scene. Remember these were face based um, lights. So um, sometimes it's a little easier with face based families to actually place them in 3D. So that's what I'm doing here. I just made a uh, section box modification so that I can see under um, and you can see I'm just placing one uh, on the face of this cabinet and there it is there so you can see it's just a small little uh, two inch uh, two inch round light and I'm just going to copy it uh, a couple times under those those um, white cubby cabinets that you see above now let's see what that looks like in Enscape as I turn on uh, Live updates. Uh, you could see there goes the LEDs underneath. Uh, you could see the the incandescence or the the cans underneath the the casework, and so they add a little something. You know, they, they add a little something to the scene. You can see it's starting to starting to pull together uh, pretty nicely. Now I'm actually going to use a floor uh, to add a grassy sort of field in the front yard. So uh, the site that this is on, um, the view off to the south, which is where the island is facing, that just kind of dumps off. It's a giant hill mountain, I guess, uh, depending on, on who you are. Um, and you don't really see much. So the, the view that I have in Enscape is perfect. But the north side um, is actually more of a front yard, uh, even though it's basically woods, but um, it's got a little bit of grass, then it goes up. So it's something that you're going to see. So I wanted to place want to sort of place the building on on a site. So what I'm doing here is I'm actually just making a floor. It's just a six inch floor. Uh, I'm going to give it a grass material. And I'm just going to use that as my as my grass in the in the front yard, just using a material called grass. Anyone who has used Enscape before, um, you may know that just by using the material name grass, it will turn it into a three dimensional grass as well. Um, you can modify it and customize it a little more. Um, but either way, it's going to it's going to do that for you. Um, you can see I need to make sure I place it into my Enscape on design option. So I just flipped it off. There it is there. Now you can see a little bit um, out that window. We're actually starting to get a a a a yard so to speak I, I say I, I say yard but it's this house is really in the woods so it's kind of uh, you know not really much of a yard but um, so now I'm going to add some trees so this is something where I could use Revit RPC trees um, but I also um, like being able to place uh, placeholders um, and I had them already in the scene so these are actually just um, families um, being used as placeholders uh, if you've seen my twin motion videos I do the same thing with twin motion these are actually the same families and so what you can do here is you can place these families they're just blocks um, uh, and then you can go into Enscape you can select a tree that you may want to use and you can say link it to a Revit family. So even though I just have this square there called tree one and tree two, I can link it to an Aspen 24 foot in the Enscape environment. Um, the reason I did that is I just didn't feel like dealing with our, our RCP trees and, and you know I like the families that exist here in, in the asset placement. Um, and also to show you guys uh, the really cool tool about linking. So here I just linked, I had tree one and tree two and I just linked them. Um, uh, I link them to the family. Um, so that square family is just called tree one and the other one is called tree two. And now you can see, boom, just like that, they populated an Enscape. <clears throat> so now you can kind of see some trees in the distance. Um, there's a little driveway they have there, um, but it's, it starts to sort of plant you, um, plant you on the, no pun intended, on the, on the north side of this. Uh, the other thing I did here is, as I, as I mentioned, it kind of goes uphill on this side. So I actually just quickly did a, um, a split 
split um, modify sub elements on the floor and I just made it slant up a little bit. I could have used topography here, sure. Um, but again, this is just sort of background noise. Um, in most of the scenes, you won't even notice it, but I wanted it to make it seem like um, it wasn't just going on forever on the north side, right? The south side is where you want it. So you'll see by the final scene, I, I make this a little bit wider so that you're not seeing the ends of it and it kind of just plants you on one side um, and, and, and the other side, which is where you want to focus to anyways, which is the view um, you can use there. So a quick way to sort of just add stuff to the scene. You'll also notice that there are people now um, and there is artwork on the walls um, that part I did not have recorded, but um, I did add uh, people. I think people are great in just adding scale to the scene, giving you a sense of, of scale of the scene. And then the artwork um, is simply um, just decals um, on, a, on a frame. Um, so I want a very specific artwork, so I didn't want to use Enscape content for that. Um, so I have uh, just a simple picture frame family um, that has a decal, decal on it. And I could throw in some cool mid-century work. So just like that, a uh, matter of nine, 10 minutes, um, I've showed you how we kind of built this scene and got it ready for uh, our presentation. In our next episode, we're actually going to start getting ready for that presentation to the clients. Um, so we're going to start with actually um, Revit views. So I'm going to show you some tr tips and tricks to creating presentation boards, which essentially are just PDFs. They're not boards anymore, but presentation boards. Then the episode after that, we're going to set up our final Enscape rendering and scenes for that. And then the final episode of this season of Modern Kitchen Renovation series is actually going to be the client meeting. So you will get to see me present this to clients. Definitely, if you're enjoying this series, comment below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next episode.